Good evening, everybody. Oh, we were talking that one to the Y, mate, weren't we? Yeah. Setting hey, up son, just eight o'clock. Setting so up we're on time for a change. Setting up three minutes to go. Ooh, it's squeaky. Right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another live stream. Um, hopefully, everything is fine, and we have audio from both of us, and we have cameras, and it's all going to go without and any hiccups so tonight. Same shit, different week. Yeah, I say we won't have any hiccups. Um, uh, I'm not as confident, but I'll keep bluffing my way through it. Famous so, last words, Ginge. Yeah, famous last words, indeed. So, um, another week of hobby has gone by. I haven't done an awful lot this week, mate. Have you? <laughs> You've probably done a hell of a lot more than me. How have you not done anything this week? Well, I've just been busy. i tell you what I have done. I've spent a ton of... I said male, male. What? Oh, I tell you what, uh, Tim. I uh, worked Tim out. Here? Yeah, he's spamming chat with I said male, and the last word was organ. Um, so uh, unnecessary double entendres for so early in a stream. Um, but on a related note, I've actually found the setting for youtube live chat editing or <laughs> blocking so i now know why that was happening um and it's uh it it wasn't easy to find but i did find it so we're now running in live chat mode not top chat mode which should be less it should be less frictionsome and shouldn't edit things that it shouldn't edit um so then, uh, you can all see David's got a new fancy background blur on where as well, so you can't see the entirety of my bedroom. <laughs> okay, Tim did get censored. Let me check that it is in live chat, not top chat. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing it's else. Not... There's nothing, nothing else I can do, mate. Uh, if it's edit, it's just... if it's censoring we you don't... that, it's because you're being foul. We don't like the Germans. I've fucking lost my piece of tissue. There it is. Okay, that's interesting. Tim's saying it does say top chat. Okay. I'm just going to try something then. I wonder if that... Yes. Should I tell people at home what I got up to at club on Monday? Copy. Just bear with me a second. Yes, sir. Go on. Tell everybody. Well, no. First of all, for everybody who's not been here before or is catching up with us later on YouTube, um, welcome to the live stream. We're over the next couple of hours. David and I are going to uh, do our usual format. So what we're going to do is talk about what we are going to be hobbying on tonight. Uh, then we're going to have a quick chat about what we did at our gaming club meetup on Monday night. Um, then uh, we'll just basically chat and interact with chat and do some hobby and kill some time until about 9 p.m. when we'll get stuck into our main topic, which tonight is all about paints um, as they apply to the hobby. Um, so do, do you want to should we go to your desktop, mate, and you can go through what you're painting tonight? Because are, are you yeah. still working on your necromunda? Yeah, go on. Go on. OK. So I've actually, I think I think we've got David's hobby tip that you said that I needed to cover as well. We do last stream as well. We do actually. You can go get under the bonnet with that. Right. Let me just wash my brush out. Right. So we have Necromunda minis. We're nearly there. We've got just some details to do. The black to highlight bit of highlight on the weaponry and we're done so all in all quite good if that'll fo focus let's let's oh. move the light a bit is okay. it working or is it yeah it did focus for a minute ago hang on let me just confuse the shit out of it so what are you working on tonight metallics hang on yeah. Let me just see if I can. That's better. Change the camera. Oh, Whoa. there we go. 
It's because I was using the wide angle cam. That's why it wouldn't focus. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. So yeah, we've got black to highlight, dry brushing to do, and then That's detail like the mohawks. Okay, cool. Um, um, and then some of you will notice they've got the name tags on and everything. Yeah, those but, are good. Those three D printed tags. This is this is what I wanted to talk to people at home about was decisions we make when we base our minis and how to get the most in the base so that we don't end up fouling on everything. So this guy with his massive sticky arty axe is virtually off the back of his base. And Paul was saying I should have gone further with him. But I think he's all right. Well, I just sort of said that I... Because, again... It's this... something a lot of people just... There's tutorials and stuff on the internet for basing and texturing and everything else. Yeah. But actually centering your minis on the base as best as possible. Well, it's sort of the opposite of centering, because it's like, for the for those of us who are the older gamers, who played a lot of those rank and flank games where everything was bricked up, where back in the day, whenever you were basing mon miniatures, you were acutely conscious that you did not necessarily want the feet in the center of the base. The posing of the miniatures, arms and that, often required that the feet needed to be placed somewhere completely counterintuitive sometimes to make the miniature rank up with his friends and to contain all of the yeah. elements of the model within the base. And I saw it's when a, David my, did these Necromunda models, it occurred to me... It's here striding forward. See, it's that's a great example. Of his base. Exactly. That's a brilliant example of how to position him. Um, Again, because if you can contain all of your models, even if you're not playing a rank and flank game, like David's just said, if you're containing the the, the 3D volume of that model inside its uh, base, base you just don't bump into terrain. You don't snag other models. I mean, you can't do it completely, can you, mate? Some no, of the models, like particularly this, this with Games a Workshop, of the foot, it's just a bit of a pain in the ass to get that yeah. accent. But yeah. Um, one I'm, out of a squad of ten is not bad to just be slightly twatty to deal with. Yes, obviously back in the day, slaughter bases were because uh, that's the other thing about obviously slaughter bases were designed with that in mind because they. Cheers, Darren. The actual um, uh, miniature designers obviously they knew where the slots would be on the oriented on the mat miniature base they would position the feet be with the slot and then they would sort of like contain the miniature within the volume. It was a whole Did, sort of like aesthetic. I don't know if some, if, if other people feel the same as me, but even like the GW slotter bases that were on the Skaven Blood Bowl team, whilst they're nice, I do prefer a good dynamic pose with the legs looking like they're running rather than being directly in line with one another. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, D I, don't get me wrong, mate. I don't think there's even, even as old grognards, I don't think there's many of us would miss, would, I, I mean, I don't miss the fact that most things aren't slotted anymore. Um, it annoys me that Infinity is still slotter. Because... Because I not, have to cut them off. And not only that, when you've if the if the tab doesn't fit precisely inside that slot, you then end up with a huge like wound to Get fill in to the fill. base. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's not it's not really necessary now. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, it's not necessary at all anyway. No. As long as you, it's like I say, it's just one of them things that if you don't. Again, with Games Workshop now, they do all their. A lot of the models have got pe pegs on contoured or decorated that's, bases. Well, that's the other thing I hate about GW models, like the fucking commander for the tower that comes on a bloody rock pile. Well, I'm not based in a city, so I've got to cut that fucker off and do something. Yeah. There. Again, it's one of them things like we were talking about their terrain um, and their details having. Their models having too many details. For me. Uh, bases is one of them things just leave it leave just the let base make the decision yeah it's so easy for us to flex our creative muscles with bases you it isn't a huge amount of work just leave it and it gives the power back towards the modeler um I, I, I yeah i'm i'm all for plain basing um 
But again, it's like even in the instructions, they don't sort of like show you, you know, make sure you look top down on the model position. Because, uh, again, that's all you've got to do when you're basing your miniature. Look top down. Try and position as much of the volume of that miniature within the base. Yeah. And and you'll naturally find what what um what position for the feet works best for again, that. Again, these Necromunda bases were a bit egregious to do because it meant that uh, I'll, there's a few repeated bases and I wanted to angle the minis differently, so I had to go through and pick what minis were going on what bases kind of early on. Yeah, but again, um, that that was a self inflicted wound because you're using those um 3D prints, aren't you? With the uh... no, they're not 3D prints. They come oh. in Necromunda. Oh, they're actually Necromunda bases, are they? I thought yes. they were an add-on that you'd bought. No. You go to... There you go. Learn something new every day. Yeah, the, yeah, that's true, Darren. The metals... Obviously, the slotter's great for the metals because it helps them to stay up. But even then, you've got pinning. But I suppose it depends on the sculpt. I mean, things like Infinity yes. with their skinny legs that are only like one millimetre wide anyway, you're going to struggle. Um. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I was thinking about it for was in terms of packing, because the other thing with containing your miniature within its centre, you know, within that cylindrical volume that's almost imaginary going up from the base, the fewer projections or whatever that you have from that, the easier it is to pack stuff. Do you know what I mean? If you want to pack your miniatures safely and get them into cases and things, you don't need foam oh, with big out cutouts and, and stuff. Twat that you've got. That storm size curse breaker. Yeah. With that yeah. bloody staff out to one yeah. side and the sword. It's just a complete and a twat to pack every single time. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the Stormcast models. Do you mean, do you remember them bloody flying things from the first oh, release God, yeah. with their incredibly fragile wings that were attached by hardly anything? They were a nightmare to transport. Um, so, um, that's that's what David's up to then. Still cracking on with the old um, Necromunda. Uh, me, I'm still on this. Uh, I did um and ah about whether to get stuck into some bolt action or just have a change of pace, but I've got to keep plodding on with it. So I, I'm still working on this vampire. I need to do the underside of these wings. Um, I've Have you told me what you're doing with them yet? Uh, well, I'm going for this sort of like almost plummy um base coat uh then i'm gonna it's like i said to you, you you've given me some inspiration this the the sort of veining that's separating all the muscles on the body it's giving the model some great contrast and definition from a distance but it's just a bit too stark for me so i want to knock this back with probably glazing over um something that's sort of a blend probably something similar to this plum color just to blend these dark reds and this sort of blue gray together and make that less stark then we're on to final because i mean to be fair this is the only thing on this model i'm going to do the spine with all these protruding bones the claws on his toes but essentially that's the model done and we're just going to do a few highlights um probably in a really pale or bluey gray uh, pastel flesh tone um, and then it's done. So, you know, although it's been a lot of work to get here, we're on the home stretch with it. Yeah. Um, it does look good. Um, as I say. Yeah, uh, Darren's uh, just made a good point on metals. Occasionally yeah. you don't have a choice, centre of gravity. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, to be to be fair, that's sometimes metals are designed with, with no centre of gravity at all anyway. They're just bloody chaotic. The power of the claw, yeah, good song. Uh, Orgasmatron, if I remember correctly. I know what my claw's for, as he would say. Um, so, mate, Monday night. Do you want to tell the people at home what you got up to? Well, do you want to go first? Because I've got quite a deep dive into what I did. Okay, that's fair. Um, I will go first then. Um Unfortunately, I haven't got any pickies because I got so engrossed in what I was doing and was joy enjoying it so much that actually photographing it wasn't top of my agenda, um, which is a shame because the table did look fucking spanking. 
Um, I played Infinity on Monday night. Um, it was a very low point game, just under 200 points. Um, and I was teaching Dan from the club. He's played a few games of Infinity, um, dipped his toe in. Dipped his toe in, bought a hack of slam army. As it were. Um, but one thing he hadn't really explored was... Um, fire teams. Uh, yeah, fire teams. So that was the whole purpose of the game was to basically introduce him to fire teams. So we restructured the club's hackers Lam list, which is the models from the red veil start set. We restructured them so that they were a sectorial, uh, rammer, rammer, in, rammer, rammer defense, task force, rammer task force. So basically he had a five man core team, uh, and a couple of extra hangers on. Uh, and I brought a five man team and a two man duo. Um, and, and basically, we just deep dived into how that fire teams in Infinity can make um, you much more order efficient when you're playing the game. Because to be fair, it, it's sort of a required thing with Infinity. Um, there's not many people play without some sort of fire team um, in, in their list because it's just so order efficient and makes you force so much more effective. Um, but yeah, it was a fantastic game. Obviously, it was a training game. We there was you know with changing um, because Dan's only it was only Dan's third game. I think there was a lot for him yeah. to learn, um, and we we got through. He won in the end six points to two. I think it was. We played one of the missions from the new ITS fourteen decapitation, um, and uh, we got to uh, turn two. But then I had to call it because of time. But it was fantastic. Fantastic game. Fantastic evening. Um, I really, really enjoy Infinity. Uh, and I wish I could play more of it. But that's true of so many games. Um, you know, I wish I could war game four or five times a week so I could get all the games I love in play. That would be nice. But hey ho, not it's not, not to always be. yeah not always that easy don't, is it? don't live in a dream world unfortunately <laughs> no real world got in the way again god damn it um and i tell you um david and i also had some gaming on saturday didn't we mate yes we did have a good game on saturday um we so go on mate you take some underworlds didn't we we did we re because um uh for those of you who've seen our streams for a while know that when we went to UK Games Expo... Oh, we... Tim Tim wants entertaining. He's throwing nuts at us. Oh, is he? Um, when we went to UK Games Expo, we had a bit of a... I had a bit of a nightmare with the Underworlds where I had a... I'd previously played Underworlds and found it quite an enjoyable, balanced game. And basically, David Roffle stomped me two or, <laughs> two or three it? times. 10 nil 15 oh christ i don't know something it was fucking it was embarrassing terrible. scores um and i'll be honest it did leave a bad taste in my mouth um Bollocks. because uh, basically when we tried to play my because again i've got stuff that's old stuff for kill to uh, kill team for underworlds back from the first release and uh, david had got some of the more recent war bands and we then finished off by playing the two out of the nether maze box together. Yeah, and that, the score was the and that Dark game. Versus the Knight Shadow Stalkers versus the... Skaven? Skaven, yeah. yeah. And that game was quite balanced and seemed reasonably fair. That was um, tight. It was like, what, 7-6? Yeah, it was a very close game. Um, I can't remember. I think you probably won it again, but it, it, it was a a game that you felt could have gone either way. And and that really started me down a, a, a road of despair because I thought, oh, does this mean all the stuff that I've spent time collecting and painting is a waste of time? Well, apparently not. With a little bit of effort, we rescued things, didn't we, mate? Um, because No, <laughs> with a little bit of effort, you absolutely fucking ruffle stomped me. <laughs> no, I won the first game by four points and the second game by two points. That was hardly a crushing victory either way. The first one was worse, I guess. Um, but, yeah, 
so yeah, we played two games of Underworlds on Saturday, um, and it was bloody good fun. Uh, now we won't go into too much more detail because we did film everything, and I am eighty percent through the first battle report video. Ooh. Um, so that should be going up on the channel at the end of the week because I'm on holiday from work this week and if I don't get it uploaded by the end of this week or Monday next um, work's going to start getting in the way and it probably will stall and not get done so hopefully we'll get some battle report videos well one video will go up quickly um, to be fair the other one we in the bank yeah but the other one now we've prepared up prepared all the assets and done all the process once it's a bit like the assassin's creed videos each time i do them they do get a bit easier um a little bit quicker <laughs> yeah it, uh, tim's saying on a serious side note the video does look odd just a part of paul's head and a blurry room where david is out of view well we um you know us, Tim. Top quality, quality. all the way. Um, quality, not quantity, Tim. So, yeah, so that's it. That's our gaming for this week. Um, no. 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 Yeah. We haven't even touched on what I played at Club on Monday. Oh, well, I thought we were going to skip that. So, Monday at Club, I played with some Necromunda minis. I played a three-way game with Ricky and Luke. So we played Parlay on some Zone Mortalis terrain. And is that the name of the mission? A, yeah. It's really ignited a spark in me to play it in a campaign. So much so I've plan started planning. Um I didn't so... notice the call go out on our Discord server earlier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a, uh, a, 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 a call to arms has been issued. Um, but yes, I absolutely love it. It It is not a balanced game, but whilst there's feel bads, we were all playing sensible lists and didn't have melters, so we didn't leave bad tastes in people's mouths, like when Paul played. Um, but Ricky wants to give it a go. Like, that surprised me, because Ricky... Yes, we did have a lot of flicking backwards and forwards in the books to find out rules like what pulverize and other shit does. But so a lot of key, were... keyword nonsense. Yeah, keyword soup. Um, but once we'd started getting in the groove of it and I could start remembering the keyword soup, the game started going quicker and quicker. And then uh, Ricky's like, yeah, no, I want to give this another go when those kinds of games are not really Ricky's jam. Like, speaking from experience, anything that's complicated or techy or has a lot of words is usually an instant turn-off for Ricky, isn't it? To be fair, yeah. Um, but no, Ricky wants to give Necromunda more of a go and wants to give it more of a go in a narrative campaign. So I've said, yeah, no, that's fine. I'll see what I can do, what I can organise. So I've been scouring the internet um, and sorting out bits and pieces. And as Paul said, I issued a call, what was it, last night? And I've already had four or five people bite, so hopefully we've got a nice little campaign going um, over a couple of months or over a couple of five months because I'll do it as more of a slow grow and we can bring that to you on the channel um, with what we've done in the hobby in that particular week. I, I mean, I would love to jump in, but I know I'm, I won't be able to commit to a, a campaign in the club particularly because it's, you know, it's difficult to schedule that part that much of your diary to one game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, and I, I get um, that. I, for me, I'm. I think my main goal is to like get a game in of it once a month. Yeah, sure. And I think part of what might help with that is it might give you an excuse to do something on the weekends I have little with the lads. Yep. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, though, I do. Um, uh, that's what she said, bad taste in the mouth. Um, uh, I do think that 
uh, I want to try the game again. Because as David briefly mentioned, I had dabbled in Necromunda. I played it up in Butte. But we we played a lot of three-player matches. I think I played about four in the end. But one of yeah. the guys brought a list that was perfectly legal. But it was like basically two guys with melter guns and photo visor goggles and they were just massive fucking delete machines so yeah. we played in that very confined zone mortalis type scenario where it's you pop around a corner and you're like four inches from somewhere from someone hostile and i just didn't click i, I found the game a bit because because i'd built I'd, again, I didn't really do a lot of research. I just built a Vansar box where everybody was carrying las pistols, and I went for numbers over individual strength. And it you really, I I just found it an exercise in absolute frustration. But obviously, Actually, that da- is a good David point. has. I will, give, I will give Commander Cheapskate a shout out on the YouTubes because he built mine and Ricky's lists. Um, for Escher and Goliath gangs, um, oh. as is basically cheapskate, thousand points out of the box builds. Yeah. Um, which again, if that's the kind of level that you're playing Necromunda at, and you're happy playing it that way, then go for it. Do you know what I mean? To be fair, I've watched a few of his videos um, since, um, and I said, you know, he's got like right, like it's like you say, he says it, he's got suggested builds for if you're just buying the one box you know um and i'm definitely going to on the basis of you enjoying it i'm just going to do a little bit of research maybe tweak the models i've got um and and give it another bash um because i I think think, i think you should i think you'll enjoy it actually i hope so um because it's like i was saying to you after mackie's for me GW kind of hit it out of the park every time with their box games. Yes, the price isn't amazing, and there's certain feel bads like Warcry, but again, it's a narrative campaign. Like again, this with um, what's it called? Necromunda. Yes, certainly not a game to play as a one-off. Really, something to build and have a narrative campaign with. Yes, by all means, fucking knock yourself out. It's got legs to grow and develop and everything else. And again, okay, certain bits need tweaking or house ruling. But as a cam- as a campaign scenario, if everybody's on board with that, then it's it's no bother. Do you know what I mean? If yeah, everyone's yeah. there for the rule, rule of cool and having fun and not power gaming the shit out of it, then happy days. Okay, I think this harks back to the video me we made, the stream we had a few weeks ago, where we said about, you know, when you're designing a game just have a clear vision of what yeah. you want that game to be and then just sell that don't try and put every you know don't try and dress it up in clothes that don't fit because i mean that you know that's one thing about the gw products they always they want all the products to have the same three play modes matched open uh, narrative it's become their sort of thing but I think the brutal truth of it is that unless Not that's part can of face that. well, un- unless it's part of the design philosophy from day one, it isn't going to work. You can't just say, you know, you can't just say and make it so. It has to be designed into the game. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, as I say, I your your experience, mate, has definitely made me. D- decide that i want to have another go at it now having said that i don't know where i'm going to fit it in my ridiculous schedule but um, is your books out to what april april now may it is i think the last last week in april was booked today jesus so um, oh no i booked i booked you last week in april for necromunda oh okay um which one was that 24th oh okay i thought okay that's fine i better check oh no because they'll be the 31st won't they well no, no I, th- I when i looked on my calendar i think the 14th was open i don't know but anyway 
that's fine. I'll check. I'll double check it with you because I've yes. just scheduled a game with Dan, and I don't want to double book myself. Um, so yeah, that's so that's what we got up to at club this week. Um, you'll have to sound off in the chat, guys. Did you, uh, what? If you got up to any gaming or um, Tim's again opinions. Uh, on... How did your games of Legion go, Tim? Did you win those? I have to sound out in the chat. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to scroll back through the chat here. Um, yeah, I'm just on operation. Yeah, you like... It's a Be down. busy painting. So, oh, what are you What are you guys working on tonight? Are we, are we hobbying or are we chilling or what are we doing? Well, from the sounds of it, Tim's doing his taxes and wanting entertaining. Yeah, well, he said, I saw his comment that, damn it, the taxes can wait. Um, what was I going to say? News this week. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think a, there's been a hell of a lot. It's been a bit of a dry week, hasn't it? The only thing that I did think as we were talking, funnily, you were saying about Games Workshop's boxed games... I did notice that they, um, amongst all the other swamp of stuff that they spoiled at whatever event it was in America. Las Vegas Open, LVO. The LVO. Um, the new kill team's been teased. Yeah, Arbites versus Dark Eldar, isn't it? Yeah. And there's With... the new, what's it called? New Warcry, actually, that I'm quite hyped for. Yeah, you got quite excited for that, didn't you? Because yes. we were discussing that, was it? At McDonald's? What, vampires versus corn. Yes. Don't quote me. I think you are correct, sir. So yeah. Um. Now, I know. I. I. I have the 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 kill team. I'm. I'm currently like I own all of the kill team releases, but I'm not sure about this big box whether to bother or not um I, genuinely i don't like the look of the rbts um they just don't do anything for me and the dark elder are just uh dark elder with an upgrade spree yeah that's what i'd heard that they were the sort of like because that's the pattern they tend to do isn't it something really new and something borrowed and recycled yeah um it's... and also the terrain is basically exactly the same as they've done in their other boxes, but with another objective sprue, exactly like they did for Shadow Vault. Um, so, and I'm wondering, although it is good terrain, I'm wondering just how much of that stuff I actually need. What do you guys think? Uh, Darren's on Stargrave for a game this weekend. Yeah, I mean, Tim, I, I did say that to you at... Um... Mackies, didn't I, Paul? If you paint them in uh, gloss black, it's going to look like they're going to some sort of fetish, do? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's what the that's what Tim's saying. Uh, to be fair, do you know what? I haven't seen these models. I need to probably look at them. Um, I shall finish. I shall just finish. Well, this. you know what you could do. You could always pull it up on screen for that's those. That's exactly home that what I'm going to loop. do. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, because to be fair, the arbite or arbitus or however you want to pronounce it, there's something that's been out of 40k's sort of model range for so fucking long. Obviously, I remember remember them from back in Rogue Trader days, but they've not been supported with models for forever, have they? No. Um, don't think so. What was it? I, yeah. What, what was it no. called? Kill Team Gallo Dark, isn't it? Is it Kill Team Gallo Dark? No. Kill Team? Just t search Kill Team LVO. That'll get you where you need to go. Ra Soul Shackle. There it is. Soul yeah, Shackle. Yeah, they went kinky with the fucking naming, didn't they? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't want a video. I want a blog or something. Warhammer Community's got pictures, I believe. Oh, wow. How do you feel about them? 
Huh. Yeah. Just, just yeah? Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So, right, everybody can help me out here. I know there's a dog in the list. So this this is the Bell of Lost Souls article with these oh, God. Now, why are there ten models here? Because there's ten in oh, Kilting? I suppose. Cancel. Go away. Oh, of course. Yeah, there's ten models in a kill team, isn't there? Well, do you, to be fair, I see what you're getting at. The paint scheme is probably... <laughs> I mean, do they have... Is black the thing? I mean, this black and red paint scheme is fucking terrible. As, again, fetish events. Um, because they're there with the Dark Elder. They're going to the Shell Shackle yeah. event. Happy day. But I tell you, that's that Cyber Dog. I'm afraid that's that's it. I've got to get it. Oh, fuck. Oh, and then this is the sprue. They've just got a few computer terminals and some modified doorways that have, or holes blown in walls. Is the new yeah I terrain did see that with a oh you can blow through your walls and make them reachable. Uh, I don't know. I do. I mean, I do love dog miniatures. That's part. That's a don't bit of a weakness. Do it. Just buy it when it's a, its own fucking set. Look at the dude. Yeah, I know. The guy the guy with the flail, he says, being generous. Is that what it is? What's that? The Dark Elder? No, the Adeptus Arbiters guys. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, they've got, like, fucking Cylon helmets on. Yeah, they are a bit weird. I mean... Why is that? Has that guy got a trumpet or something? What the fuck is that thing with the wings? Not a clue. I'm sorting out a candle. Yeah, they're they're different. I'll say that. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's. Different I don't good. know. I don't know. That dog is fucking cool though. <laughs> I don't like him. Don't like it. Don't like it. To be fair, there's not been a kill team that I've gone, oh, I want that. And again, the Dark Eldar look good, but it's like you say, they're only stock models. They're a stock kit with an extra spring. Again, I really like the, what was it, Octarius, which was Krieg, Krieg versus the Orcs, but yeah. the Orcs just did nothing for me. The Orcs are cool models, though. Yeah, but the Krieg are better. Yeah, it, it, it's what it's whatever floats your boat, isn't it? You don't like the winged helmet. It's Again, like the bottom I... fall, like the spare propaganda. Yes, Tim. Yeah, yeah, that one with the fetish mask. I I didn't like. I liked the traitor guardsman in the set that had the traitor guardsman in, but I didn't like the other ones. I mean, I'll, I'll be again. Those are those who know me. I've got a fairly low. Bar I, of entry. Yeah, for me, as long as something's got character, that's the main thing. Fuck. No, it can be as weird as it as they like, as long as it's got an identity of its own. I'm fairly tolerant of that thing, sort of stuff. Um, you know, if if it's different to what I've got, you could probably sell me on the idea of getting it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. particularly if the game is good and I do enjoy the new kill team the thing that annoys me is that I mean it's like you've said wait until they come out on their own um, I think I'm right in saying that they haven't released the um, unique models from the last ki uh, the last two yet yeah but don't they do it on a cycle well, yeah, but then this is G Dub. Yeah, it, you know, again, what is it? Don't worry, what is they it might this... make you. They might make you buy it exclusively through them. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? That's because exactly... I did see. That's what the Jerry did making Shadow a about. point in um, what's it called? Stream Tim's stream on Tuesday. What's that? 
about GW and the new warehouse that they've got that's better for shipping and airmail and everything else, and then the fact that it's not in stock anywhere other than GW where you pay full whack for it. It's a valid business tactic. I, I, I was going to say, I had my suspicions when they did that with Shadow Vaults that this was going to become a normal practice thing. But I then sort of talked talk myself down from the brink. Well, but look you at re- it this way. You if reckon it, that I was yeah. a, it's going to be GW exclusive distribution? Yeah, they've got you hooked on the crack cocaine. So they might as well carry on dealing it. Is this stuff supposed? Is it because I mean again? Is this stuff up now, or is it being spoiled? It's been spoiled for later in the year. It's for later in the year. So if I go online and can't find it available for pre-order anywhere, I shouldn't panic. Yeah, it's not out yet. Okay. Well, we'll have to see. I, I must confess, you've probably because again if i've got to pay full whack for yeah it, that was definitely the vibes i was getting from it tim as well very judge dread yeah and i couldn't give a flying fuck about it um yeah again i'd i to be brutally honest i'd rather go out and spend the money on um fallout wasteland warfare yeah that's the thing that's that's the thing that's probably going to stop me, because do I want to pay all that money for just a set of terrain that's the same as the set of terrain I already have, that I already have like two sets, two full sets of basically. Well, it was it wasn't bad with, uh, what is it, Morlock and Octarius because they were different enough, but they are just sort of diving down a rabbit hole of giving you the same shit again and again and again. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely going to be the thing for this. This release schedule will already be planned out when it all the miniatures will have been made, designed, all the products will have been planned. So we're going to have to sweat this out to the end now. All of these Kill Team releases are going to be the same format. They're all going to be, you know, rubber. They're all going to be churning out the same terrain with you know a unique set of models and some and i suppose if you were playing boarding actions in 40k it wouldn't be too bad i mean that's the other reason i don't mind the models because i don't have a huge 40k collection in terms of variety and i don't and i don't mind spending 10 i don't mind painting 10 models of every faction because i'll probably never complete collect an army i'll tell you what though that terrain is also quite good for necromunda if you're going for that zone mortalist vibe it's good for loads of things it's also good for aliens versus predator um but like i say i ha- and again that's why i didn't balk at all at um shadow Dying it. because i thought two sets for a four by four table is perfectly fine but three three sets of exactly the same terrain really Somebody's taking the piss now. And again. Arbites of all from Dread, if you look at the old version. I'm not old enough to know, though, Tim, am I? Remember? I'm a whippersnapper. There's, yeah, everything's derived from something else. And, and certainly, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, the, a secret that the 2000 AD aesthetic was leaned on heavily for some of the early Warhammer art and model design. I I don't know. I just... Yes, it's nice that an old faction's getting some love, but... To be fair, I've got a feeling that aren't... Isn't there some historical art that those arbiters are based on because i'm sure i've seen art for for figures like that not a clue yeah i do remember tim yeah i do um yeah so all in all to be fair gw made dread at that point didn't they i think they made the dread game that's that darren's done all of his crew written them up named them have you have you played the other um, McCulloch games, Darren? 
or is it is Stargrave your only one of the stable that you do? I know Crispin was doing bayonet, wasn't he? Because he said about buying Napoleonics for that. Yeah, I've got 3D printing to do for bayonet, which is something we need to get to the table this year. Yeah. Because I'm not having another year go. You go by not using your Christmas present. No. I agree. Plus, this is the year of not buying new games, but getting the ones we already own played. Do you know what? That might be another reason I don't. If you. Here's my here's my two cents on the matter. If you'd only got one box left to build and paint and say the terrain out of another box, say all this Galadark terrain. Yeah. I think, yeah, you can talk yourself into getting it. The fact that you've got two those plus two more, not even out of the boxes. Yeah. You know, maybe I should just look at doing what everybody else does and buying the things I want out of people who've flipped the sets and split them on eBay. Instead of spending 120 quid on stuff I don't particularly want. You know, just, you know, spend 50 quid on the bits I do want, even if they're slightly overpriced for what they are. I'm having with uh, Warcry at the moment, isn't it? Like, I like the set that's just come out, Sundered Fate. With the two teams in that, but I hate the terrain. Yeah. And I need the terrain and the rule cards to play the game, so I'm not buying that. And the only reason I like this new one that's been teased at LVO is because the terrain actually has a little bit more of a building and density and feel to it. Yeah. The warbands are all right. So, fuck it. I'm probably going to be in on it. Yeah. Um, so. Again, though, we know why they do it, don't they? It's this trick of getting you to overspend. Yeah, we know. It's it's horrible economic reality. It's baity. Yeah. Baity as fuck. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't like it, but it is. Have what you got it is. Ni- little nameplates from Darren? Oh, that's a good call. Are you a? Do you do printing, Darren? Three D printing. If uh, not, he's only in northeast England. Red shirt so. one, red shirt two. Tim being sarcastic as ever. Yeah, so he's gone frost. He's done frost grave. He loves ranges of shadow deep. That's one I haven't tried, mate. And the fact it's got a solo play mo- mode is like just nuts. Um, he's done proper names from all. Because I was going to say, if you're a three D printer, Darren, you want to get onto that website the old David had and get some name tags, name plates for them. That'd be awesome. Especially because it's free. But yeah, I guess that's the only... I mean, the only other news news was um, TSR backed down massively over this fucking... Oh, yeah, um, no, it's OGL Commons, thing. isn't it? Yeah, they're going to use the Creative Commons framework because... It's, it's irrevocable. Yeah, and it's it's not. They've got no say over it. You know, they can't... They can't change it. Once it's under Creative Commons, it's under Creative Commons, etc. Um, so they're trying to placate people, but that's good. You know, it, I think it, it'll definitely be better for the future of D&D. Um, uh, well, I'm where, glad the lynch mob got something. Yeah, it's good that the people won, as, you, as we say. The people were heard and... They the comp the corporate entity back down um instead of fucking burning all its bridges. Which is the way it should be, you know. You can't have a scenario where people aren't scared that their customers are gonna desert them. Um, because it it's just 
it doesn't no, no it do name plates, no 3D printing either. I'm using a bit of mix and minis from Core Space to Infinity, Void and Bigger Line Productions. Okay. Well, if you would like some uh, name plates doing Darren for them to make your life easier and just for the rule of cool, uh, hit me up. Yeah, just messages. Dave will sort you out. I mean, mine cost me next to fuck all in material. The website for the name tags itself is free. They're dead and... easy to post. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah, Jiffy Bag. Do you think they'd survive the mail? Uh, yeah. That's all good in the hood, then, Darren. I've posted. I posted stuff to your mate in Butte in a Jiffy mailer. No, but. I mean, those name tags are particularly slender and fragile looking to my Fine. untrained eye. But what as I say, wraps for? I, I do hasten to add that it is a very untrained eye. I'm not a 3D printer. Um, and I'm not up on the tech and in the know. So yeah, as I say, other than other than that, well, apart from one other bit of news, but that's related to the main topic, so we'll leave that till then. Uh, no, 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 plates. Ah, uh, fair enough, mate. Okay, that's fair. That is fair. I, and again, to be fair, you might have that issue where they have a name, they are named Mister X, and then they die, <laughs> and you have to be resurrected as Mister Y. So yeah, that's not a bad that's not a bad call. Um as calls go. No, but it's just me being thinking. an animal. Um because when uh, bad news Boris here dies, we're gonna resurrect him as bad news Boris Mark II with a grenade launcher again. Yeah, his twin brother, his lost twin brother. He's Who not looks... lost, he's just in the underhive. <laughs> He looks exactly the same. Same, same, uh, same uh, African skin tone. Oh, Crispy's back. Yeah. Tim needs to create some decals for his battlefield. Battletech Max. Is that something you do a lot, Tim? Custom decals? Presumably using, like, uh, laser printed onto decal paper. I have dabbled. Regretted it. Well, no. The issue I found with it, I did enjoy it, and I was quite happy with the results I got. But the only thing that I realised quite quickly was, it's amazing how convenient it is to be able to print in white ink. Yeah, which is not a thing. Which you can't do. It's the one, unless you've got like a commercial printer that has white ink, most high street home printing, because it's done by the three colour system, Method. You, you can't print pure white sort of thing. No. Um, printers get white by leaving the paper. Um, and it's actually surprisingly... Annoying. You know, it is surprising how you think, ah, who cares, you know. But then when you're doing decals to go on so many colours, it's like, you know, that would look better in white. <laughs> well, uh, again, there's that thing, isn't there, of, well, if you're doing it on a, if you want it in, in white over, like, black, you print it and then freehand onto it. Well, you might as well have just freehanded. <laughs> Well, yeah, although the idea of using well, Tim's it... Tim's never done it. It'll be his first try. Okay. Well, good luck, Tim. As I say, as long as you're vaguely competent with a... Printer and a bit of editing software. Yeah, one of the graphics packages, the drawing programs. Um... Gimp, Inksc Inkscape. Yeah. Then... As I say, it's not difficult to come up with rudimentary designs. As I say, the only thing is is the the printing side of it, actually delivering that to 
your decal paper because the other thing is getting the colours intense enough because obviously I was doing it with a laser printer um, and again with hindsight photo you know sort of like uh, a good quality bubble jet that's designed to print photography quality images that's that's what you want um really for producing decals um and of course sadly i don't have a, bub a, a an inkjet printer anymore because you know <laughs> we you all need thought... a third mortgage to just fund the ink well we, we all thought inkjet was a dead technology when laser started to become cheap and then you realize oh yeah but there's some applications inkjet's just the perfect fucking thing for you know because even the best lasers don't give you the same colour intensity. I do I do like my laser that I've got. In the Navy. Right. Fucking good bit of Ailstorm this evening while I get on with this. Ah! Thanks. I have a PLN. It just be names in black and on transparent paper and apply to white flat surfaces on the base. Yeah, no, that sounds. As as you yeah, sounds like you're not being too ambitious. I was printing my the first and only time I did it was printing chap champ chapter symbols for a custom marine chapter for shoulder pads. In the Navy. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, almost. Yeah, almost nine o'clock here. Ten o'clock in Germany. Main topic, fleas. We're, 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 we're keeping him on tenter hooks, are we? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, he's, he's raring to go. Well, I suppose, with it being three minutes to nine, we should have a, a little bit of a tirade, and you need to go talk about some news. That links well, with tonight's topic. Yeah, let's let's start off with the news item, then, that that is related to the topic. Let's just finish painting in this crease on that what wing. Hey? Oh, I love painting wings. Not. Do you want um, to know what I love? Painting wh white over fucking black. <laughs> and it's not even white, it's fucking deck tan. <laughs> ah, mistakes were made. You should, have, you should have had some of that bold titanium from Pro, Pro Acryl to put underneath it. Well, but, somebody um, that didn't it. buy me that as a Christmas present when they were buying... <laughs> Pro acryls. What do you want me to do? Buy the whole goddamn range, you fool. I mean, if you're offering. <laughs> oh, in fact, that brings us to our topic, doesn't it? So, um, paint. Um, in the news this week, here's the thing that I got really excited about. So, I, for those of you who've been uh, with us before and watched the channel before, you'll know that I am a massive fan of the Army Painter Speed Paint range. And they announced, they've released a couple of YouTube videos this week spoiling the release of the next mega set for their paint range, which is the Speed Paint mega set. I think there are 50 paints in it. Um, including three speed paint metallics, juries out. We've talked about them on stream before. Uh, uh, the medium, there are 45 new colours or 45 brand new paints. And then I think they've obviously got the medium and some grim black and some of the old mainstays. And they've just... got some metallics, haven't they, as well? Yeah, the, the, they include a brass, a silver and a gold in there speed paint metallics but and as i said jury's out mate um don't you think i'm not a fan yeah um i having seen a video on where they were sort of like um demonstrating demoing them mm, yeah the effect was interesting but yeah 
I, I know, I'll be honest, Darren. It's 180 euros for 50 paints um, from Army Painter, at least. They've put it up on their website for pre-order now. I don't know if it's available for pre-order from other locations, but everybody can just chill their heels because it's not due to release until April anyway. So this is a <laughs> massive pre-order window. This I don't is, think well, any of us need this to This is their pre-order now to fill the container that's on the way from China after Chinese New Year. Yeah. Calling it now. Yeah, as a, as a man who orders a lot of containers from China, you're probably dead right. Um, six, six to eight weeks to get to the UK and Europe from China. And considering Chinese New Year ends this coming weekend, that's what will be happening. Well, I don't know, Crispin. Um, Crispin says he's not sure if that's a good deal. So, um, 180 divided by 50. It's um, three and three point three. It's three. Four quid a bottle. It'd be three six. Is it three sixty? Three point six. Yeah. Well, half of 50 to 25, yeah, it's just over 350. It's like 355 or something. Yeah. So that's in euros. So what's the current exchange rate? Oh, apparently they do not import. They're, so what, they're manufacturing it in Europe is what they're the saying. The bottles will be coming from bloody... The Far East. Let's be brutally honest, Tim. I mean, to be fair, you know, on their videos on YouTube, mate, they do have photographs of their paint filling lines. So they might be at their industrial unit or manufacturing site, uh, wherever they're based. Are they Europe? They're east. Are they Eastern Europe or Northern Europe? Eastern Europe. Denmark, aren't they? Denmark. So. Center of Europe. Well, I don't know. I don't. For me, Crispin, I'm a fairly adventurous painter. So, see exhibit so, A on screen shortly with the fucking color choices on that vampire. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, the the thing is this: I do not, um follow paint formulas online i very much Double. when i when i when i buy things i try to put them to use it's sort of like a it's a it's because i'm a tight lincolnshire man um i uh, don't like to see anything be wasted are you so, doing the war cry you've got to do the war cry ah fucking much um as we say um in our part of the world um so if I buy 50 bottles of paint, mate, they'll get used. Um, it might take him 30 years, but they will get used. Yeah, I mean, that, David, makes the more valid point, which is how long will it take me to get through all of that goddamn paint? Um, they also... Oh, uh, yeah, so... Uh, do you mean that they packed disinfection stuff on their site, Tim? That's quite interesting. Um. Yeah. Okay. That is understandable, Crispin. And I'll be honest. Singles are three ninety nine. So yeah, it's what we. It's re, Tim's. Tim's got his little calculator out there. Although he's a brain like an automaton. So we were right. Three fifty eight. Uh, uh. Singles are selling for four euros. What's the current conversion rate, mate? Do you know? Do I look like a fucking oracle? I haven't quoted anything in euros okay. for a couple of days. Let me have a so look. So I've got no idea. Euro GPP conversion. So a current, oh, it's pretty much one for one. A euro is 90 pence. So. Yeah, exactly. So for us, it'll be what, 30 odd pence 3 20, cheaper? 320 a bottle. Yeah. So they are, I mean, if you, what do I pay about £2.70 for a model colour on Amazon. Um, I don't often get free delivery on paint just because of the way it is. Um, 2 is roughly what I pay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So, it, I mean, I I am hyped for. Oh, we've come off it. We've gone on to this. I am hyped for the Mega Paint set. Um, just simply because I have used the twenty four paints that came with the uh, the basic set. And I've done several big projects with it. I've done my Forge Father's Army. I'm painting pretty much all of my Assassin's Creed in it. Um, I will probably be painting. You've mentioned the word. You've uh, mentioned the word. You've set them upon me now. <laughs> it's already been in the chat, mate. You missed it right at the beginning. Um, uh, I will be painting my Harakiri Blades of Honor Kickstarter with it, I imagine. Uh, and I've also probably be painting most of my Batman and I may even start doing more of my um, Mythic Battles Pantheon with it just because it's such a really quick way to get projects finished. Um, but obviously with this, with the announcement of this set and with the fact that I was actually contemplating dropping 160 odd quid on paint, we there's it's definitely that there have been loads of other videos that have come out this week so this was a video that was done by broadsword wargaming yeah, i was going to say the broadsword wargaming went on my watch list i watched a little bit after you pointed it out to me earlier today but um uh, I, I mean watched all of it broadsword wargaming basically took all of the contrast paints vallejo express contrast speed paint and the dipping inks from green stuff, green stuff world, world and did them in a side-by-side -side challenge test and they the conclusion it was a, it's a good video for a start but the conclusion they came to is that there is no one brand that, that had you can rely on that had the best color in any particular f field or across all the colors they were yeah doing. across all the colors so more to be fair to the video speed paint had more hits than all of the others but even speed paint had misses and yeah. and ones that weren't the best shade of green or weren't the best shade of yellow or whatever um and the, you know the thing with these mega that like mega sets are falling out of favor anyway i did a search online earlier today preparing for this video um where i because big paint sets mega sets they seem to be a thing that army painter is clinging to but games workshop have narrowed it down to smaller sets haven't they mate i think G yeah, gw still offer you a mega set of the entire collection in one hit if your wallet can take it where's that sold because i can't find it <laughs> there is a vallejo model color starter set with 72 of the 169 colors in it but i couldn't find a product anywhere with all of the model color or game color in it for sale anywhere uh, yeah but i think the full vallejo set is that much no it's not it's only 72 colors because I, I did look at that product because that's the one that's on the thumbnail and the game color one that comes in the same little briefcasey thing um and yeah. it, it holds about 75 bottles so it's a big set but i don't think it's the full set although having said that i don't know how many's in the game color range it might be the full game color range um scale color is still stinging clinging to them scale, scale color do it do they um yeah. i think ak interactive actually calling myself do out pro, pro acryl uh, as well pro but acryl there's the pro acryls do they do a mega set but they only do what they only do about 25 yeah. colors anyway don't they yeah so yeah. it's different um ak interactive do a, a massive one don't they? it's about 200 paints I'm sure they do because I've seen that. I looked at that recently in Scotland on their website, and um, the third, the third gen that they call it. Um, but I mean, Games Workshop don't do their mega paint set anymore. They do little boxes of like twelve to fifteen colours. Is it? Yeah. Uh, or here's your Necron colour set with an. Yeah, and they put an army on it. So here's the Gene Skis. Paint. Let's paint Gene Steel Colts. Let's paint Necrons. Um. But 
there's so many. The Vallejo is 220 euros, but currently not in stock. Okay, is that okay? So Tim, so is that on the Vallejo's website themselves, mate? I'll tell you who. I See, 220 does. euros. That that's not all 170 odd paints, is it, for model color? It can't be. Because that's so cheap. That is what, like fucking just over a euro each. Which is insane. Oh, that's good to know that Jerry was enjoying the speed paints. Um, I mean, as I say, I, I'm not going to come here. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an expert because unlike the people at Broadsword, I have not bought any of the competitors. I haven't tried Vallejo Express. I haven't even tried Contrast. And I didn't buy Contrast when they were launched because they were so fucking expensive. Um, it was just like... I'm See, already I, paying I, less than three quid for Vallejo model colour. I am not spending the thick end of a fiver on a fucking bottle of paint. I'm out. Yeah, I mean... Oh, I okay. went to my local boys at the weekend and bought some contrast. But that's because I saw the colours that I wanted and went that way about it. Rather than having a look at it, having not had a look at this broadsword wargaming video, um, and the other thing is, I know, like for example, the contrasts I can use and work in as, um, what's it called, glazes and washes and everything else, without um really thinking about it. Yeah. Um, um, because I don't use contrast in your traditional contrast style. To be fair, though, mate, I think there's an element of you and I represent the two sides. Oh, yeah, the polar opposite. The, the two the sides of this argument. So, like, tradition, if you think about it, paint is an essential tool that we require to get our hobby journey done. Don't, isn't it, mate? It so, is if you want miniatures with colour on them. Yeah. So, it you know, the sh David's David's approach, as highlighted by this broadsword wargaming video, right? The, the sensible thing to do with tools is buy the best tool for the job at the time, based on that individual tool's performance. Um, so brand loyalty is foolish and, and doesn't make any sense unless that tool is the right tool for the job. So like what, what there's an argument that says that the sensible thing that we should be doing is Either, person on your per colors. either personally trying different paint ranges and different paint styles, whatever we can get our hands on. And certain factors do enter into it, don't they, mate? Value for money has got to be the ever-present, and it doesn't matter what your purpose of it is. Availability as well, because, of, again, yep. I'm fucked if I'm going to order a Pro Acryl from Element Games, even though I love them. Because I'm only going to be ordering one or two at a time. I'm going to get stung for delivery. I'm going to have to wait three or four days for them to turn up. And you could pop and... down to Boys and buy a GW yeah. pot or a Vallejo model colour and just crack on. Yeah. Or again, buy it on Amazon. And get it next day delivery. Um, yeah. So... I, you know, your, your approach of not... not of just buying what you want when you want it, even, you know, and trying to find the best product for the job. That's the thing that makes sense. But it's like this. Another thing that ha is happening recently is these sponsored paint sets. Now, I don't know if Tim, you. The best paint you use on your mini is the paint that you have. If you don't have it, buy whatever floats your boat. Have the Ancient Citadel paints, games, and model colour, yeah. army paint, and wars, yeah. and speed paints. Yeah. This this is something else that's becoming a thing now, isn't it? So, like, I don't know if you guys have Co -labs. seen this. So, Ninjon and Vince Venturella both collaborated with Pro Acryl and Monument Hobbies to produce new colours with their sort of branding on them. Now, to be fair... Um, and there's the collab for these latest versions of Army 
but the difference that I was just about to say, mate, the difference is although that Deanna, I don't know her surname, uh Howell. Deanna Howell, Goobertown, and Ninjon and the other guys, the two the Britain American who team up, but I can't remember what their channel's called. They are involved in the paint development team for Army Painter. They are not getting their names on the box. They are no. not getting branding identity on these products. The Monument Hobby ones, as Ninjon is showing in his hand, are branded with these people's IDs. Yeah. These are co-branded, co-marketed products. It's a different... Different um, kettle of fish. It's a different kettle of fish, and it it the thing is, it's turning paint into this sort of collectible commodity, isn't it? See Chimera you later, Colors. Chim Chimera Colors is a prime example, right? Of the you got to mix everything you want. You don't yeah. get anything out of the bottle. Mix it. Be professional. Well, but that's because Chimera have committed themselves to that we will only produce single pigment paints isn't it they will not allow any because it, it's like they've got a mission statement when you buy our paint it will be signal single pigment carrier you know it will be as simple a product chemically and you know that we can make it so that's their usp in a way so by doing that chimera have basically said well that means we're going to have to fucking have hardly any colors because you know instead of us mixing them to produce commercial paint the people are going to have to mix themselves for use um what's this um uh, crispin's port he's it's from that duncan guy uh Two thin coats and the fact that he's got another one going to fucking Kickstarter. That yes, well done, Crispin. I'd forgotten all about fucking Duncan. Yeah, I mean Duncan, Jesus Christ, that's that's another thing. He he's literally got his own um <laughs> Yeah, okay. You that you are right, Tim, but that's not we all know what we mean. Yes, we can't mix extreme colours and you have to buy a product for them, but that it's a bit like effects paint. You know what I mean? You are going to have to buy something at some point. Um, or are you making the comment in the context that Chimera are deliberately limiting what they can do? To be fair, <laughs> yeah, they probably are. But then again, you can probably get fluorescent medium that you can add a high pigment paint to and produce any fluorescent colour you want if you fucking want. There, there are probably products out there for the high-end artist that will do all sorts of things. It depends on how much money you want to spend. Because that's the other thing that comes with all these boutique and special products. Pro Acryl just are guilty of it. I mean, I know their products have supposedly got great pigment, uh, great coverage, blah, blah, blah. Oh, pro pro Acryl. Fuck me, fucking, they're expensive. Yeah, but pro the, the fucking... I sprayed the yellow over black. And it covered. Yeah. Like something that you would only dream of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean... No one in their right mind would do it that way. It, it, it definitely is a thing that I think we're seeing a change in the way. I think some of it as well is youtube and like instagram related and everything else because painting content is so easily consumed now in our hobby and anyone who's ever everyone's got an opinion on it or goes and sticks ninja on or whatever in the background while they're painting do you know what i mean right so it's so easy to consume and become a sponge and then when you see like for example if you're a, if you're a ninja or a vinci v guy and you're seeing in the background oh well vinci v's working with these these paints must be good because vinci v uses them and i like his content and everything else do you know what i mean yeah it's so e <laughs> i'm not saying it's a trap because some of the marketing is quite good but it's a trap like it's so easy to just slip on that slope 
I I think that market, again, marketing I mean, like... is marketing is what is you you've hit the nail on the head, mate. It is it, marketing is what it's all about because, like. In some of the moments in his videos, Ninjon has sort of made throwaway comments about him having a problem where he just buys all the paints. He buys yeah. everything. And if he sees a new paint range, he must have it. I suppose in the same way that, I mean, with me, it's games. I see a yeah. new game and it's like, oh, I need to try that. Um. You know that it's it's like I lose my my rational sense. It's like yeah, you, you could try that game, but when are you going to play it? Who are you going to play it with? You already have twenty games you don't play. Why do you want more sort of thing? And it's it's becoming like this with paint. I think it's paint is becoming more of a hobby product and less of a tool. Do you think? Yeah, I know. there is that. There is that. Everything is content, um, Crispin. It's. But. It's. Or. It's tough. I started out pretty good in this hobby with Vallejo early on. Because of not paying stupid prices for Citadel paints and the issues that they have because of the containers. Um, and I do like a bit of experimentation, like Paul says. There's some, I own some Army Painter, I own some Citadel, I own some Pro Acryl, I own some Contrast. Like, I want to try some uh, dipping inks and I want to try some, what's it called? Express. Like it's all on my radar. I want to try it and be a hobby, a hobby slut. But it's I tend to just again. I think I touched on this with you the other week. I have tried and tested recipes. Oh, I'm painting leather. Quick, reach for the leather brown from Model Color. Don't reinvent the wheel. And I am the exact opposite. Um. Because to be fair, I did exactly the same. When I first started using the model colour range, because obviously I was moving from Games Workshop, I sort of developed... Got equivalents. Yeah, I developed my own systems. And like, particularly things like flesh, I'd always paint flesh the same way. Um, and I'd always paint wood and leather the same way. Um, and, you know, certainly in the last couple of years, I've tried to deliberately not do that. It's like, oh, well, I could stick down chocolate brown and then blah, blah, blah. But it's like, well, no, hang on a minute. What if I start with a a, a, a green grey as my base colour? Do you know what I mean? For my wood. And just deliberately do things that seem counterintuitive. And an, and part of it is I'm not trying to push and challenge myself as a painter, but you're just trying to get shit done. I just want to try try. I want to use the products I've got, and I want to see what they can do. Because if I because it's the, the 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 trap that you've just highlighted is if you become a creature of habit, you will have the twenty colours that you never use, and then there'll be the ones that you replace over and over and over again. It's like I have over 120 model colour now. I have bought a second black, a second brass, because I think it looks better than the golds that are in the model colour range. Um, uh, I bought a second dark sand recently and a second neutral grey. And German grey uh, I've used and gone through a bottle and one of the browns and the reason i went through the whole bottle is because i used it as my go-to base coat for doing a desert brown a desert base yeah. so every base i did for my sigmar armies had it as a an even coverage all my fantasy armies had it so i got through that brown in no time 
can't remember which time it which one it was, but one of the Browns Not anyway. Field drab was it? Uh, no, US field drab. I got through doing my Japanese army exactly the same thing. I used it as the base color on the bases for like two bolt action armies, which is why I got through it. Um, um, but other than that, I very much try and share the love with my my um, paints. Um, but and again, not I, be a I creature have of habit. But that's mainly because I just forget what I own. But and to be then go out and buy, and then I'm like, oh, I've got two coppers. I've got three German greys. But I've then, got... a- then again, though, if I only owned thirty paints and did churn through them quicker, I'd still get stuff done. Yeah. Am I? You know, again, is it a case of justifying? My main issue with the all this contrast and speed paint range is like the marketing behind contrast was one one thick coat and it's done. Yeah. And it really isn't. Because some of the cover like it's not a consistent with contrast. product. Yeah. With, with contrast, it's not a consistent range at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got some that have got really high pigmentation and covering power. You've got others that have literally no covering power. It's the same in all of the ranges to a degree, particularly in the contrast. It's more of an issue in the contrasts because, again, the paint's thinned to the point that you can see through the underpainting so that it's speedier for you. Um, But with Vallejo Model Color, there's still some shit covering colors. It's the drawback of the product it's there's not a um one it's, there's not a silver bullet do you know what i mean yeah i mean yeah but tim t- I know tim what, makes I a fact the, the the thing is yeah you you're dead right Army paint to do what they promise, but again, there's colours in there that you've still got a thin, that fucking purple that obliterates everything. Yeah, and Crusader skin isn't a particularly good. It's not particularly strong. Um, I mean, it does cover and flow into the recesses, but the shades are very weird for a skin tone. Yeah. Um, right, uh, ostentatious mohawk colours for a Goliath gang. Uh, um, well, you've already got orange on the model. Green? I've got green, though, in the trousers, haven't I? Yeah, but a neon green? I mean, a really insane green? Because blue, obviously, blue, blue green? Yeah, but again, you do you want to introduce another major colour group onto the miniature? Well, the only reason I'm thinking of introducing the blue green is because I can also use it for their stim packs. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to tone it in with something else. Um, I noticed, Crispin, I don't know if you are being serious or not, but do you know what, mate? If Just give the YouTube thing a try. I mean, just start. You never we'll know. If you, if you enjoy it, do it. And if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Um, no one's going to hold you to it. Was that the Hive Dweller Purple, Tim? I mean, I, I've i used it. I'm, I must confess I tend to thin it with the medium probably 50-50 because if not, it goes so on, particularly if you're not painting a big area of a model, it goes on so near black, it, it lo- the model ever loses its definition. That's just me, though. And to be fair, the... The the army paint range for me the speed paint range is a ninety nine percent success. Do you know what I mean? There is yeah. just there is just that one that's Couple a bit of a of pig. Liars. Um, but uh, and and in terms of what David's saying about the or the Vallejo model color range, the thing is, mate, there are some paints that don't give great coverage, but they give. They give, don't give great coverage because it's known that when you use those pigment groups, particularly yellows and oranges, the only way to give them good coverage is to add black and white to the main base 
paint base to give them coverage. So, you know, they're, they're sort of like known issues in paint formulation. Yeah. Um, and and it, it you're gonna have the Jerry Lynch mob. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to call. There's a there's a, the the. The other thing I was sitting here thinking about, you're saying you're a gadfly and you experiment and you'll buy a bottle of this and a bottle of that and a bottle of this and a bottle of that. I have bought the odd thing here and there. I bought an army painter ultramarine blue, used it twice and it sucked so hard. I never wanted to use it again. Um, I I won't, I won't touch the army paint and normal paints uh, because similarly to you, I've had terrible experiences and we might be being, but again, the thing is, in the modern days of YouTube, I could probably go and do a research and it's like we could probably find out which is the best ones of the Army Painter range and let's buy them. Which are the best ones of the Pro Acryl range? Get those six colours that are just killer. Do you know what I mean? But there's an element of... One of the reasons I buy the model colour range is because I've, I find the paint easy to use. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, it makes perfect sense to me, mate. The, the colour range and the colour selection is part of it. but And also, to be fair, having a huge variety of colours, again, it comes down to your paint style. I'm a paint-to-play guy. I am not somebody who's going to take eight or ten really good paints and then mix and blend everything I want from those so that my models look different. If I want a different shade of green, I'm just going to reach for a different shade of green. Well, again, when your models get chipped longer term, it does make repairs a lot up. easier. Um, yep. And that's that's the other thing that, because again, I can sort of understand why people say, well, yes, you can you can take a small range of acrylic paints and mix and blend a lot of stuff. It's like I haven't got a really nice plum color, but if I I'm mixing burnt red and um blue. Inter intermediate blue and it looks cracking and it gives me a beautiful sort of like pastel plum color um and i know monument a pro acryl i think in literally in fact there's a color very like this in one of those new packs they've released from bloody um ninjon and then but uh, cause I think Ninjon said he uses it in base tone recipes, base, uh, skin tone yeah, recipes. Base skin, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, I, I do do it when I'm pushing my painting envelope and putting myself under pressure, but with speed paints, you can't, you don't want that. You don't want you, you, what you want is you want to be able to just chuck your speed paint on your model. You don't want to think about it because that's the idea. It's need. If it's not quick, it's do you know what I mean? If it's not absolutely zero effort to do it, the product is failing. This is just my opinion. But if it, if it requires a lot of effort and thought and consideration and planning, the product you might is be failing. Using normal paint. Exactly. It, the whole point of the speed paint is to make that painting process from beginning to end as short and as tidy, quick as possible. And and if I have to mix and blend and think about oh, whatever. Now, I know that you can mix the speed paints. And, and I've seen a lot of videos where people do mix speed paints and they even mix contrast paints with speed paints. Um, I think I've seen that uh, artist Opus, he... I watched a video of his recently where he mixed uh, one of the speed paints and one of the contrasts to make a, a glaze um, yeah, to yeah. go over his dry brushing. Um, oh, uh, again, artist Opus is a fucking awesome mm. example here of just work with your gut and, again, just really nail a technique for what works for you, like dry brushing for him. Yeah. What he can achieve with dry brushing is things only as mere mortals can fucking dream of. But bringing it, I mean, I think you you mentioned it earlier. The thing is, I don't know. Do you think it's the the industry has realised that the 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 collector? It seems to me that the industry has realised that the collector gene in us 
because we've all got a little bit of that genetic code in us. All of us people that play war games, do tabletop hobby, have that collector gene in us where we want to buy the completionist. You know, the completionist, yeah. That we want to have all of those that range of models. We want to get all of that army. We want to have we, it's there there's very few of us are like i'm just going to buy that i'm only going to buy that and i'm not going to be tempted by anything else that i see here most of us have got the habit of acquiring more than we can ever use and and i think that the industry i think it was probably what we're looking at is probably something that was to some degree inevitable that they realized that with paint there was something else that they could flick that switch in our heads and make us start acquiring and buying way more than I'm not I'm not criticizing Jack at Club here. But Jack absolutely raves about the alcohol Vallejo acrylics. And I'm like, I've already got Vallejo metallic acrylics. Oh, the yeah, the, the metal color, yeah. But so does so does Vinci V. To be fair, in fact, so do a lot of people. Everybody says that that Vallejo metal color range, I think, is the is the sort of technical name for them. In the because they're quite large, are they forty mil pots? Yes, yeah, with like click that. lids. That there's a lot of people behind him on that, mate. They are supposed to be some of the best metallics out there. Um. Yeah, but. I've got what I've got. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you in the sense that, and I've said this before to both people in the club and to you, I have a good range of the model colour metallics. However, I will definitely be trying the metal colour range. I mean, my gun metal is on its last legs, and I will not be going out and buying out buying another model colour gun metal I will be seeking out one of the darker metallic the metal colours. Because th this is the thing with me, right? I, I like the products I like and I stick to the products I stick to because they're good value for money and they're consistent and they don't disappoint me. But I'm not so blinkered that if something comes across my radar that I, I can't be drawn into trying it. And and it might seem... Well, again, the problem is with... And this is probably a problem for other people elsewhere as well. Our local hobby shop doesn't have the best selection of colours or paints or anything else. If we want to go to somewhere that's got a nice range or something, yeah, we're yeah. talking about travelling all the way to Nottingham to Element. That's true. I mean, we live in a rural place um, where retail access is absolutely fucking terrible, but do you know what I mean? Um, again, why did I give up on Citadel Paints? I honestly didn't give up on Citadel Paints because there was anything wrong with the paint. I got sick of the pots. When I first used, I can't remember. I think it was because Jif, literally boys were local to me and I bought a multi-pack that had about eight colours. One of their, because they do like eight model colour colours in a set and they'll call it like their German war set or their skin tone yeah. set or whatever. And I bought them and I was using dropper bowls and it was like, fucking hell. <laughs> This is so much better than piss arsing about with these pots. It was like, I'm done. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and to be fair, I, I'm honestly, I'm done with pots. Washes and that, maybe. Um, uh, because they're the only thing I probably would, washes and Again, glazes I probably would. If the contrast price wasn't so egregious. You uh, probably bought some contrasts. Maybe, maybe. But, do you know, for me, the thing is, am I ever going to put it in an airbrush? If I'm never, ever going to put it in an airbrush, I'll have it in a pot. If I'm ever going to want to put it in an airbrush, fuck them. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to buy pipettes and start pissing about with that. Um, but the paint itself, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No, it's... Um... 
but again, it, the thing is, it doesn't it doesn't matter which product range we gravitate towards. I think there is that element in us where we just want to collect all of it. I mean, if you're doubly cursed, then you want to collect every color in every paint range. Um, yeah. I mean, I must confess, I I consider myself quite lucky. Is that something that's come across my that's crossed my mind quite a bit? Is like I don't own many game color. I wonder if I should start getting more of the game color paints. But the, I th there is a lot of actual uh, color. Tim, Tim, no, go away. I said I wanted to try the dipping inks from Green Stuff World, <laughs> not actually commit <laughs> egregious crimes to my miniatures and need locking up. Dip is the way to go. Dip is not the way to go. <laughs> Everybody should dip once, mate. I've dipped multiple <laughs> times in my life. You back when you used to do modeling, scale modeling. Oh my god, the fucking talking about modeling. I'll have to dig it out at some point. Uh, the first time I ever painted a mini and committed crimes against humanity by applying winter whitewash to it with an enamel paint and then thinning it off. Oh my god, that that felt terrible. It's like I've done all this work and I'm covering it up with white paint and I don't even know if this is gonna work. Let's just say fuck it. Did it work? Yeah, was... it wasn't the best, but this <laughs> was when I was like probably fifteen, sixteen. Okay. So you wouldn't recommend the technique then? No, there's 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 other ways to do it. And I mean but, fuck uh, me, but anyway... Vallejo and other people do winter wash and stuff now for that reason. But uh, you with like the game color range i'm worried that I, i'm sure there must be a load of color crossover where they've basically got paints that the same there in both there ranges is. There really um, is. and for that reason alone i'm i'm good see this is the other reason for again this is my logic the other reason that i would stick to one paint range is it's unlikely that they're going to release two model color paints that are essentially the same you know, yeah, this is that, true. Would, that would require madness. Whereas if I go out and buy an AK interactive green, I see it in the shop and I think, oh, that looks good. And I get home and I put it in my paint rack and I think, well, that's all but fucking the same as that. That was bloody stupid, Paul. You've wasted three quid there. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if I stick to a paint range and it's a big enough paint range. Yeah, I suppose we are I can leave that side that of it to them. We are quite lucky in that regard with Vallejo. Um, I mean, again, we haven't even touched on, like, the FOMO. Vallejo Noctua and that Malefic Bloody skin. hell, that is, a good, that is a good point. These Because that's, that's now no longer produced. Yeah, that is another thing. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? So, Nocturna, wasn't it? I'll no, see yeah, if I... Noctua, Noctua, whatever it is. Just search for Malefic Skin on the internet, you'll find it. So, Vallejo, and I think they've done it several times, haven't they? Yeah, this is not their first strike. They've done... Um... I don't know... Collabs? Yeah, collaboration packs. So they've released shades of paint that are in uh small selection boxes is that the best way of putting it yeah oh that doesn't look good oh that's eight that's eight odd um so this eight is odd paints i think this is the malefic flesh set this was the one you were on about isn't it i love the look of it it looks fucking amazing the miniature <laughs> effects that people are getting are fucking gorgeous but i am fucked if i am paying 20 quid for the set for a couple of colors and then for me to rebuy the colors in the future i have to buy the entire set again which is now no longer made because it's out of production because nocturne have got their own paints but again this is um this is another example of um that premium you know, marketing effect. Well, you, you, you're making something that's a tool and you're adding those. <laughs> oh, dear. 
uh, if you look in my Discord, Tim sent you a present. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Has he sent me a video again? So, Tim, you're... you Okay, Tim's got some info on this. So, Tim, Army Painter did packs, paint packs for Legion D&D and Battletech. Do you know, were those unique tones and shades that were not marketed in any other Army Painter product? Or did they literally just take Army Painter paints from the main line and package it in a wrapper and said, buy this to do this? Because I'll be honest, I haven't got an issue with that. Uh, um, they do it with model colour, so they'll do you like the German armour set where it's got all the colours that you might want to paint mid-war German armour. Do you know what I mean? And for for like but example, they're all stock here, colours. Also, they're not unique. Got, uh, a non-metallic metal set or a wooden leather set. And now that is a, from across their range. So there's like fucking Panzer Aces in there. There's normal model colour in there. Yeah. There's a range of their ranges, but they are all available as individual paints. You might just be fucking hunting to find a distributor that stocks, for example. The okay, so so they're they're not unique paints, Tim. They're just paints from the existing range. They might have changed the names to give them names that fit vibe. the theme and repackage them. Again, that's fine. Obviously, with these paint packs that Vallejo did in this collaborative fashion, these were unique shades. So one issue was all the shades were unique. So if you particularly loved color A. The only way to buy the colour A was to buy the whole fucking box with all six yes. in or whatever. The, the, so you ended up with five paints that you never used in multiples. Or that's going down the road of like Crispin saying, well, you've always got a favourite paint that you'll use more than the others, if you're that sort of guy. And the other issue is you're locking, you're creating a FOMO product where you're, you're locking... A paywall. Yeah, you're locking these things away inside something. In the same way we talked earlier about, G Games Workshop going to lock away a silly little Eldar sprue that's got a couple of extra Eldar weapons and arms and a big bird on it. They're going to lock that away in a box of 120 quid plastic, and that will never see the light of day outside that bowl box. Even if they release the Arbitase as a 40 quid box set down the line, that Eldar Spro, you're never going to get anywhere else. So if you think these those bits are cool, good fucking luck. You need to buy that it's box. will forever hold your peace. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's, this is what we're saying about paint being treated like a collectible. They're pulling some of the same marketing stunts um, that, that we use for collectibles. I mean, Crispin's insight, I hadn't even thought about Duncan's two thin coats paint paint range. But I mean, frankly, that's the ultimate piss take, isn't it? You, it's you're, just lit isn't it? you're literally slapping. It, it would be like fucking Vallejo re releasing 120 colours out of their existing range and just putting Ninjon on it. You know? And just saying to yeah. everybody, just buy the Ninjon paints. It's like yeah, the ninja on paints are the best. <laughs> it's just fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, but that that is also a reason why neither of us own two thin coats paint. Again, I mean to be honest, that I I fall at the price point. I I very you see, I very much. I, I very much think of paint still as a tool. I know I went on about the army paint and box set earlier, and I probably am going to be tempted to be that guy who jumps into the box set and buys them all. But it's like I said, army painter speed paints, they're not something I'm going to be using as a tool to blend. And the more paints I've got in my speed paint range, the yeah. greater variety I can put on my models and still make it all quick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, When I'm painting 30 identically sculpted board game miniatures... Well, again, you've gone a bit... You've gone a bit in-depth with what you're doing currently. Yeah. And you said to me the other day, you're fucking hating it. Because <laughs> it's, it, it's taking you twice as long to achieve something that you could have achieved in a quarter of the time. I'll be honest, I'm finding it hard. I am finding it hard. Um, 
the, uh, I'll, I, I have got the... Speed paint bug. No, I've got the woman who I finished the other day in uh, for the the Miriam, I think her name is, the Vampire Countess model. I've got her on my hobby desk as motivation for me to finish the others because the pro- the they do look is, beautiful compared to pro- my speed paints. Problem I have, Tim, is I have boys in the UK locally. So we have uh, one in the town that our club's in. They have a selection of paint, but then there's another one within an hour's trip of here that I go past regularly that has virtually the full model color collection, game colors, game airs, uh, model airs. It has uh, the freaky rust and wood sets, the Noctua sets in it. It has all sorts in it. And that's what tempted me to buy this Noctua set because, again, I really like the look of the colours for painting stuff with, but I'm not going to, particularly after I discuss this with Jerry, um, I'm not going to go and buy that set if I can't go out and buy it again, because I'm one of these people that has a recipe, likes the yeah. recipe and the way it works. I'm not going to go out and change it or sub it for something else, or, again, like you have said earlier, have to mix a paint to sub for it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And again, that leans into your painting style, doesn't it? It's just something about the way you like to do things. Yeah, I mean, to be fair though, Tim, I mean, David David said earlier that we're we're not going to order Pro Acryl, Pro Acryl from Element Hobbies, Element Games when we can go to Boys and buy Vallejo or even Citadel, frankly, if yeah. we need it, need it. If we're gonna, if we, because again. For the postage and that, if I want to invest in Pro Acryl, I'm going to have to make sure I'm either adding it to an order of something else or committing and buying a lot of product. Because what are they freeze postage on eighty quid? Yeah, something like that. You've got to be pretty. You know, you've got to be in. Go down to my camera. We can do, sir. Um. There we go. So look at that. That blue's all right. Blue's okay. It certainly stands out. Is that stim pack thing on the back of his neck? That's what you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. We've got like two vials there, and then there's another one that's got like this guy's got it on his one on his chest stashed, two on the back of his neck. To be fair, I, I think David's been a bit disingenuous as well because you don't go to, you wouldn't drive all the way. Oh out no, to, I don't make an hour's trip specifically to go and get paint from that. You store, only pick right? it up when, when you're I'm, on holiday in the caravan yeah. around the corner. Yeah, don't you? Yeah, it just so happens that it's an hour on away. Um, and again, if I was out that way on a day trip, I'd probably nip by and get it. Um, <laughs> Drugs are bad, okay. They're only bad if they kill you eventually, Tim. And these guys are that fucking high on life. <laughs> it's going to be life that kills them before the drugs do. Or bullets. Let's be yeah. fair. Well, life. But yeah, I just need to wash the white. I must confess, those white weapons are going to work really well. Really well. Once wash you start getting edge, some tone on the them. And then we're done. How many coats of deck tan did you have to put on that black? Two? Two. Three? Two. <laughs> Two's not bad. I'd expected more. No, I just need to paint like the respirator bit on him. And the other thing is I've just dashed in a little bit of uh, Vallejo bronze in places to add a bit of visual interest. Yeah, look, it looks good, mate. How are you going to, what are you going to do on the white? You're just going to use some null oil? Even or... null oil, or I'm going agrac. Yeah, yeah. Dirty, yeah. Dirtiness, some yeah. Thindac, thing, yeah. thin dirtiness, thin dark racks. Makes sense. It'll also Good. sort of like, because the orange is quite a warm colour, so yeah. it keeps everything quite warm. And then uh, my leader, I've just got to paint that leather pouch on him. And we're just going to use any uh, first brown that comes to hand. Yeah. The only other thing I've got to do is these uh, weapons wraps on the couple of melee weapons that I've got. So I've got this one. It's going to do them the same uh, as that. You must have used the same brown as on that pouch. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing them all. Like a just don't use a red brown. Go for like a, you know, a khaki brown. Don't you think? 
See, I was going to go like Hall Red. Meh. I guess. And then I need to do the energy coil in the plasma gun. And what what you reckon for that? Blue? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Makes sense, because you've got blue on so many other model parts of the model. Why has that guy oh. got metallic hair? Because he's got a mohawk made from steel. That is that is a nice touch. I like that. That is an um, excellent touch. Because the, the other thing I've got to do is paint. <laughs> Tim, you know you could uh, dip them. I've got grenades to paint as well. Hey, look, even Duncan said dipping's good. And grenade hafts to paint. So I've got wood to put in as Duncan well. Duncan so. is pro-dipping. <sighs> there's a, there's other things I'm pro, like life and getting drunk and other things. Doesn't mean I hustle and force them onto every other fucker. Just oh, saying, God. Boys. Oh, God. I've got, just so you know, mate, I've got a, bot, I've got a tin of dip here if you ever want to be, you know, and want to try. I've got a tin of dip in my garage <laughs> that you gave me to use on terrain. Guess where it's lived the entire time since you gave it to me? Oh, is that is that one I bought for the club? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We've been scorned. So, I mean, what do you think, mate? Do you think this paint as a collectible is an inevitable thing it, the, the the industry I, was never going to leave it on the table i hate and it'll it. be worse I absolutely hate it i hate the fomo i hate this collab bollocks paint is paint people paint how they want i mean again there's lads at club that uh absolutely swear by citadel and then they try one or two Vallejos and their lives their lives are changed because of the dropper bottle, for example. Yeah. As a quality of life thing. Yeah. There's still Citadel paints I absolutely love. There's Vallejo paints I can't stand, there's army painter paints I can't stand. It what gets me is the is this FOMO and collector's set or again if you're just getting into the hobby, oh, the mega paint set seems like a good idea. It's 180 quid for whatever. Yeah, but you're not actually going to use them until you become competent at it. I, I'll be honest, that's the one thing I do think is worth stating, I think is totally correct. If you are in any way a beginner at this hobby, do not even contemplating spending 200-odd quid on... A shit ton of paint. You know there what I mean? There is no need. It's just, it's utterly unnecessary and it's just potentially a huge money pit. Um, so, yeah, that has to, that that cannot be argued be as. Overstated yeah, it, it's just totally common sense. While you are finding your feet, exactly like Tim has said, find, and David said as well, and probably Crispin in the chat. Whatever's local to you, whatever's convenient and easy for you to buy, just keep picking up the odd bits and pieces to do Again, the projects that I'm... you want to do. If you need an orange, see what you can get and just buy it. And if it's Case Army Painter, buy it. It doesn't Case matter. Case point here, like my friend Hugh, who's hung out in stream before and everything else, he messaged me for some tips and advice on how to paint something. I said, I've got, because he wanted some purples. I'm like, I'll just bring you every single purple. I own, knock yourself out. And I gave him six, I think it was six or eight purples to have a play with over a course of a couple of weeks, because I wasn't using them. And he's found the ones that work for him. Some of them are Citadel, some of them are Vallejo, but he's had a go, he's experienced them. My little one's getting into the hobby. Again, I just throw the box at him and go, basically, have free reign. You pick what you want for you painting your miniatures. I will help you if it's a bit thick and goopy and it needs thinning down, or it's a bit thin and it needs multiple coats. I'm teaching you how to paint, boy. I'm not um, going to tell you, oh, well, you only need this paint because I'm a snob or go down that route. Because how he paints might be more similar to your style, Paul. And again, we, we both push each other 
quite differently on what how we how we paint so i've challenged you to paint certain ways you've challenged me to paint certain ways and it's it's rubbed off on both of us do you know what i mean but we're using what we have to hand we're not going out and buying completionist sets Can't hear you, Ginge, if you're there. Paul? What's going on? Fuck it, we nearly got through the entire night, Tim, without it. Nearly the entire... F His fucking headset's died, hasn't it? That's what's happened. Um, g Nearly got through the entire evening without it. Hopefully he'll be back in a second. Um, Wonderful. Suppose I ought to wrap up for the evening then. So, cheers everyone for joining the stream and um interacting in chat if you can do one thing just like the uh video that's on like the video it helps the youtube algorithm if you can find time for anything else absolutely wonderful um we'll be back here next week same time eight o'clock till ten and we will see you all next week so have a good evening boys and bye mm -hmm.